I'm Christopher Purdy for WOSU and Classical 101, and I have been working toward this and looking forward to this for many months. I have assembled conductors of the Columbus Symphony Orchestra, celebrating the orchestra's 70th anniversary season this year, beginning with Maestro Rosen Milanov, who is the current artistic director, conductor, chief conductor, uh, music director of the Columbus Symphony. We are also joined with Alessandro Siciliani, Junichi Hirokami, Jean-Marie Zaituni, and everybody's favorite pops conductor and more, Albert George Schramm. And I want to uh, make the point that people are not in the middle of their workday in Columbus. Maestro Hirokami is in Tokyo, where it's the middle of the night. Uh, Mr. Zaituni is, I believe, in Montreal, where it's not the middle of the night, but it's a good distance. And Albert George Schramm, I don't feel sorry for you because I think you're in Florida. So <laughs> yeah, I'm in Asheville. Ah, well, even prettier. Very nice. Yep. Yep. Well, thank you all for joining us. And I want to begin with Rosen Milanov, our music director. Thank you for being here. Tell me, Rosen Milanov, what's going on with the Columbus Symphony now, today, these days, as you work on the 70th anniversary season? <clears throat> Absolutely. First of all, I would like to tell you what uh, a great pleasure it is to be here on this uh, Zoom call with all these wonderful maestros. Each one of them contributed so much in the 70th history of this uh, wonderful organization, a true treasure for Columbus. Uh, so great to meet you and uh, I hope you're all very well in these extremely challenging times for all of us around the world. The Columbus Symphony today is, uh, I am extremely happy because we are back into our home, the Ohio Theater, and we have been performing since the opening of the season. And it seems like we have uh, passed the worst of the pandemic. And the, the music that we do is wonderful. The audience is, uh, uh, coming back to the hall, I think the, uh, there are more and more people that are brave enough to come to a big space and share the air with uh, in these times of uncertainty. But uh, I think ultimately the love for music and the dedication to this great ensemble and uh, the view that everyone is expressing as a true treasure for the city of Columbus and an orchestra that makes a big difference in the life of many people is back to normal. And uh, I am just very, very happy to be here at this moment and it's at this time to, to share that uh, extraordinary experience after we have been almost um, away for a year and a half uh, in one way or another to be back in the hall and to perform music all together for our audiences. You have a couple of very large scale works going ahead. You're going to do, I believe, the Liszt Faust Symphony in, later this season. You're doing La Boheme, for goodness sake, and uh, Bach St. John Passion. So you're bringing the chorus back as well. Yes, we are planning to bring the chorus back. And um, I am my neighbor and very good friend, Ron Jenkins. Uh, I'm just looking at his apartment here across the street from where I, my computer is. Uh, he is working very hard to make sure that we have uh, uh, the choir back in, in, in place, uh, uh, trained well uh, with pieces that they have not done recently, and particularly uh, being on stage in a staged version of La Boheme is something that they certainly have never done before, being an opera chorus. So I'm very optimistic that in the next couple of months we will be able to uh, to produce that uh, incredible endeavor here, uh, La Boheme, and then uh, St. John's uh, Passion with a little bit smaller chorus and Beethoven Ninth Symphony at the end of the season. Junichi Hirokami, I know where you are, it's the middle of the night, so I want to make sure that we get to you uh, as quickly as possible. I know that you just conducted in Suntory Hall, uh, yeah. Mahler's Fifth and Beethoven's Fifth with the Kyoto Symphony. First of all, tell us, just tell us what you're doing now. No, I'm a to uh, speaking in the night to you. <laughs> no, it's um, after Columbus, uh, uh, I got uh, a chief conductor at the Kyoto Symphony Orchestra, 14 years. And this season was, uh, it, it will be a last season with them. 
But doing that, 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 that <coughs> like uh, uh, Columbus Symphony Times, we, uh, I and the member of orchestra uh, still love, loving each other. That is a, a great memory, like Columbus Symphony and the orchestra. That is most to whom it's, uh, I would like to say the congratulations to the 70th anniversary of in, uh, in the Columbus Symphony also. Maestro Rosen, uh, congratulations. And um, I hope it's uh, you uh, may, uh, making more and more it's a great success in uh, Columbus Symphony. Yes. Yeah. You made a wonderful recording of a Tchaikovsky symphony with the Columbus Symphony. Yes, um, that's uh, one of the one of the, my best recording for my life. Why? Because that time my father was passed away. Your and father then, died, right? Yeah. I remember that. Yes. And then that this this was a dramatical uh, times. It was uh, just I arrived at the hotel in the Columbus, and then um, uh, my wife called to me. Uh, your father will be a very dangerous time. What do you want? And then I was uh, I was uh, of course it's uh, kissing that that. But uh, my father when I if. I return immediately to home. My father would be angry to me. Why you come back? You have to make a good job with the Chrono Symphony because you love that orchestra that I and I decided to stay to make to the recording with also concert. And then um, member of orchestra at that time was uh, uh, I say they knew that that happened and they understand my mind. Uh, still remember that concert was a wonderful, and the people, yeah. uh, people and uh, me, of course, uh, audience also something uh, feel it. It's a uh, crying uh, Tchaikovsky. Uh, I would like to say uh, grateful to them. It's a lot of people. Thank you very much. I would like to say really, really that it's a nice memory of me. Uh, I, I'm sure my father from uh, heaven. Yunichi, you did a good job. You did a good job. Yeah. It was wonderful for the symphony and a nice memory as well. I'm Christopher Purdy. We are talking to the current music director and past music directors of the Columbus Symphony as we celebrate a 70th anniversary for the orchestra. And there is Alessandro Siciliani, who has been playing with his napkins and his phone. He's going to look into the camera now and tell us about, first of all, Opera Project Columbus, your current project maestro. Well, but we, <clears throat> I'm very glad that you asked about uh, my new <laughs> uh, company, this Opera Project Columbus. But we are here for the 70 year Columbus Symphony, so I don't think uh, it's appropriate to take time to talk about this, uh, this uh, my personal gem. I will come another time if you invited me. Tell me about your time with the Columbus Symphony then, and tell me about Carnegie Hall. Tell us all about Carnegie Hall. Well, Carnegie Hall, like I said, there was the, the diamond point, the, the, the big star for, for my decade when I was from 1991 until 2003. The music director was a fantastic evening for the orchestra, for the community of Columbus. I left upstairs the poster, but besides you cannot see it, the radio. The big poster of Carnegie Hall with the sign sold out. So, so in New York, the Orchestra of Columbus, Ohio. Some people make funny because Columbus, Ohio can have an orchestra. <laughs> yes, I have an orchestra. I go at Carnegie Hall. I can have a great success with the audience, but also the, the music critic, everybody recognizes it. it was a special event. And invited everybody to hear that. Um, first of all, I would like um, to thank uh, briefly all the, the music director, a good baby. It was uh, George Hardesty and Evan. Evan. The last name of this, this maestro. It's difficult to bring in my memory, especially as 69 years old. 
with Whelan and Maestro Badia, that they give me really a good baby. And um, I would like to thank the, 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 the other music director who came uh, after me. And, uh, and uh, I, I left, I think, a, a baby like Beverly Seals said that when I left the New York City Opera, mm -hmm. I leave a very healthy baby in the end of the world. And, and uh, in the wake of the success I achieved from this my, my period, and my story of Kami, I have to thank uh, because it was my great success. So Zeutoni and my story Milanov in these days, okay, really they was continuing what we have done in 12, 13 years. I don't know, I know good in mathematics and the difficult also to counter that because they went like it was a, no years, but months for me with the pleasure I have to be in this community with this uh, orchestra, even with the musician. It's difficult. 13 years is difficult because uh, when I was in Pittsburgh, uh, the music critic, uh, they would give me an interview. He said, why you don't plan to be a music director? And I said, well, listen, because the music director is like a guest in your house. It's like a guest in your house. After today, Three days smell like a fish. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I prefer, right. <laughs> I prefer to, to leave the show because, yeah, it's like the guest in your house. After three days, they smell like a fish. So, and, uh, but I would like to thank uh, the Master Lokami, Zotoni, and Milanov because they take this baby, even I think, I think, I'm, I'm sure, to best uh, level. They continue what we start to do from 1991 when. Uh, it was a bad situation because chapter 11 it was really close to the symphony and everybody said, I don't think you will be here next year to conduct the opening season because it's chapter 11, it's chapter 11. So uh, thank you, this community, thank you, the Gene D'Angelo, who was the chairman of the board in these days. Carnegie Hall was really, I, 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 thank you all the maestri. Um, uh, they are in front of me, and also who is not in front of me. Uh, so he's not a part of this group today. And the Carnegie Hall was a great success, it was a great experience. Uh, and uh, what would I like to say? When you are in that uh, hall, uh, everything's become magic. Uh, um, everybody said, oh, it would be a problem because the, 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 the shell is different. Uh, the trombones should move in different places. We really we need to do a lot of acoustic rehearsal. I don't know. Everybody was happy. The magic of this hall, but the orchestra didn't have any problem, acoustic problem. They was everybody happy. They, they was able to hear each other better. They sound sound better. Then, 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 then the Columbus Symphony. Okay. Also, you, uh, when I was there, I didn't have the new, uh, beautiful shell they have now, Maestro Milanov. Uh, I don't know, Zeltoni also probably have the new one. I they have a new sure. shell, and they have a new shell in the Ohio Theater, thanks to Ann Melvin. And I do want to mention her, yeah. uh, in memory of Ann Melvin, who was a, a wonderful. I mean, she helped so many people. God rest her soul, and she certainly helped me, and she certainly helped the Columbus Symphony. I want to come back to Alessandro Siciliani in a moment, and our other guests, but I do want to mention talk to Jean Marie Zaituni, uh, who is going to unmute himself so we can talk to him. Uh, First of all, as I mentioned before, um, on your Facebook page, there are two gorgeous children now. So that's news. Yes, uh, Sasha, uh, the new, the new Sasha, who's uh, three months old. And uh, Gabrielle, who was uh, actually born uh, during the time I was in Columbus. She will be nine uh, this weekend. So okay, I'm going, to ask, I, I'm going to ask you to speak up a little bit so we can hear you. And I want to know also what you are doing. First of all, what you're doing now. Tell us what you're doing now. Right this moment? Well, you don't be cute. What are, you, <laughs> what are you doing as a conductor? Like my oh, son well, said, uh, what you're doing this moment, the talking with you, Papa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, we, as we know, it's been a, it's been a period that is a very challenging period uh, for the for the arts. I was fortunate enough to to work. Uh, 
this year I'm uh, I'm connecting again with uh, my big passion, which is opera. So I'm uh, I have a year of uh, four opera productions, uh, and so this is uh, time consuming, and. Uh, COVID uh, has uh, also reshuffled the decks for many things. So I was asked to uh, write a reduction of uh, Paul Duca, Ariane et Barbe Bleu. Oh, uh, Duca. Grand oh. French offer, yes. And so uh, in, it turns out we're not going to uh, use it because uh, in Europe, uh, the rules have been starting to, to be more relaxed. So we will be able to have the full contingent of players but i did work uh, on the six 600 page score for a oh, few weeks to yeah. be able to uh, extract oh. its uh, its essence and to reduce it i i have uh, 20 pages left in front of me so i'm i'm almost done and then it will probably go in a drawer because we will do the real thing but it was absolutely <laughs> a great uh, a great exercise. Uh, since somebody, I have the somebody will want that. Somebody will want yes, that. Yes, absolutely, because it will allow to, you know, usually it takes a hundred players to to do this, and it's that version is going to be for 38 uh, players. So great. almost one third of it. I, I just want to take the 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 time since I have the uh, the mic to to uh, to congratulate the Maestro Milinov uh, also. Uh, I was very touched uh, during the, the pandemic. As I was following along, I, I always keep uh, following the Columbus Symphony. Uh, they're very, very dear to my heart. And uh, I was uh, so relieved and so happy to see that uh, uh, you, you guys were one of the few who kept going uh, and who did it in, you know, uh, uh, different format without audiences, uh, you know, reworking the, the repertoire and allowing the, the music to to keep getting to people one way or another. And that was especially uh, uh, touching to see this, uh, this resilience and this uh, initiative. And I, I don't want to forget uh, Ronald Jenkins because collaborating with him and with the Columbus Symphony Choirs uh, are uh, you know, my, my dearest uh, uh, memories. And I know that he has also an anniversary, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 40 years, I think, yes. as, as a music director of the, uh, the Columbus Symphony Chorus. So in that, uh, he, to me, Columbus Symphony and up on, until this day, uh, I, uh, you know, I had uh, so great uh, human and, and musical, of course, uh, memories. And uh, Ron was an uh, important member of this family for me. Thank you, Maestro. Albert George Schramm is in Asheville. He is a consummate musician and entertainer both. He was the Pops conductor at the Columbus Symphony for many years. He has been music director and conductor at many orchestras. And I'm really delighted that you could join us, George. Thank you so much. Catch us up on what you're doing now. First of all, this is really fun. And it is nice to see how everybody is growing up so wonderfully, yeah. you know? Yeah. Great, great, great. That's all right. But I think we know how to celebrate it all. I think we look mighty fine, you know. And it has been, of course, Columbus Symphony in my career has been at the center uh, of it in many ways. Uh, you know, I'm happily moving along without it at the moment, but but uh, it has been. I, I, I'm grateful, and then I'm grateful to all these wonderful uh, conductors that are sharing the screen here. Um, yeah, in, in your own way, I was, as you are talking uh, about your experiences with the Columbus Symphony, I'm so aware uh, that, that all of you have made singularly marvelous contributions to the organization, you know, uh, in, in terms of artistic, uh, um, you found ways of, of increasing the, the ability of the orchestra to play at a world-class level in, in, a, in a real way. And, and I, as, as not a music director, but somebody who is experiencing most of you, um, I, I can have that perspective and I'm grateful for it because it has taught me a lot. At the moment, I am not conducting much. I, like the rest of us, I did not do much. Um, during COVID, and things are slowly but surely picking up, but so is my pickleball game. I want you to know I'm becoming the local pickleball champ here, and, and so I'm enjoying that. It's considerable less stress than 
Uh, <laughs> conducting. No, you know, so, so for everything, there is a season. And so I'm celebrating as many seasons as I can at the same time. So pickleball, you, pickleball sounds good to me. I mean, that, that sounds like a, that's just as good exercise and probably less aggravation uh, when, when you're going for that. Um, somebody said to me, there's one more thing I wanted to say to you. And that is when you first came here, when people first met you or saw you, I was sitting next to a lady on the board of the orchestra at the time, and she looked at you and she said, my God, he's a rock star. <laughs> uh, so he were, so each one of you connected beautifully with the audiences in different ways. And each one of you um, staked out part, I think, of the repertoire. So here's a question I want to throw out for some discussion. Uh, what is there about the Columbus Symphony that is unique? Maestro Milano, we'll start with you. I think that there are so many things that are unique, both on musical and personal level. And I'll start on a personal level, just because probably uh, it's it's going to sound less than about bragging about what I'm doing, since I'm the currently the current music director of the orchestra. But this is this is a group of musicians that have been playing together for a long time. And this is a wonderful thing because they know each other, they sense each other, they don't need to uh, stare at each other to feel and to, to take the journeys that the music is, is asking them to do. They're incredibly flexible, they love music, they, uh, they are committed to exploring new territories that they've never done before. And one thing that I am very impressed is their their commitment to performing new music. I know that when I started at the beginning, they uh, there was a little bit of tension when when we were when we would program something which was incredibly challenging. But now that they, they feel at home, and uh, we have, if anything, that I think I have changed perhaps a little bit uh, in the past uh, six years since I was a music director is. Uh, that uh, very large percentage of repertoire that was written by uh, composers uh, in the last 10 years or so. Who are alive, yeah. <laughs> yes, who are still alive, exactly. Uh, so that's, that's something that I appreciate a lot. Uh, of course, there are a lot of changes in the orchestra during my tenure. I think about 30% of the personnel of the orchestra has been appointed by me which means in the last six years. And only the last season, we had seven new players in the orchestra. So that's that's a, a big change, a big uh, sort of a renewal and uh, uh, and passing on the baton, if you wish, uh, that uh, I think it's important for every organization. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very, very proud of of uh, this ability that I was able to continue to build the orchestra uh, the way I inherited it at a very high level and to also contribute something that uh, has always been a big passion of mine, bringing the music of our time to the stage. Thank you, Maestro. Who else wants to uh, throw in a comment about what they found to be unique about the Columbus Symphony during your tenure? Oh, <clears throat> it's a... It's also it's it's a complex uh, it's a complex uh, question. Uh, of course, I was listening to Maestro Milinov, and I could relate to uh, to what he was uh, he was saying, and I had the same experience. Uh, the the fact that the this orchestra, uh, when I got to know them, uh, I was uh, I was amazed that they could that they could uh, play chamber music together, basically, you know, even if we were uh, 70, 80 uh, on stage and, you know, 100, 200 with the, with the seniors. Their ability to be coherent together, to have, you know, and this is, this is an homage to uh, Maestro Hirokami, Maestro Siciliani, and uh, Maestro Badia, who preceded that. And, and first and foremost to the musician themselves, to their commitment to this, uh, to this ensemble playing and to uh, uh, keep and, and, and sustain a culture uh, within the, the, the group, you know, to play, uh, playing core repertoire with uh, the Columbus Symphony was always a great joy because we wouldn't start from the beginning, you know, it was already, uh, they were already, uh, 
uh, ready to express, ready to make music because they had already the knowledge and the know-how to, to do this. And I had a similar experience also while playing new music, uh, whether it was new music because it was uh, music that was written uh, as a commission or recently, but also whether it was new music to them because one of the things that I tried to you know, broaden to do my share is, is to play less uh less uh you know meat and potato uh, repertoire whether it's french music of course because uh, it's from my 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 origins and always being open to uh reevaluate the orchestral sound the orchestral textures i found them to be great uh, partners very uh, very open and is that unique to the columbus symphony i don't know but in my experience to have this level of openness and and commitment and and uh, flexibility is is very rare. You know, it's not necessarily something that we would expect or to take for granted. Uh, Maestro Hirokami, you were nodding yeah. your head, agreeing when uh, Maestro Zaituni was speaking. Um, what did you find with the Columbus Symphony? What made it special for you when you conducted in Columbus? Yes, um, Joe. Yeah. That's like uh, Masters uh, said, uh, uh, really I agreed, but uh, then I must say, thank you very much, all of the musicians in the Columbus Symphony Orchestra at that time, in spite of the two years, for me a very short time, but my life for conductor, that orchestra was one of the best of nice atmosphere. And uh, greatest people who has a high technique, not only technique, and heart uh, from heart, and also warm people. And then um, they may dedicate it to music to make to audience such a wonderful spirits. Still, I remember I met them first time. I, I didn't know the name of the Columbus Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> uh, it's uh, unfortunate that I ashamed that time. It, uh, I still remember when I conducted the first time in the Rachmaninoff Symphony, second movement. What? That orchestra is a high level. And this mine, and then um, immediately playing beautiful. It's a high technique, nice feeling. And warm sun, and they look to me smile. I look to them smile. It's a military house. I now falling in love. And then um, uh, I must say, and this orchestra in the world, I have to say, rare case. And um, all of the uh, masteries, I understand, but probably it's a this orchestra, and the member of orchestra have to plow by them service. You were wonderful musicians, and I never forget for my life. I thank you very much. They made me every concert, every music, every symphony, every chorus pieces. It's wonderful. I must say, the one of the best orchestra for my life. I will say, Mr. Hirokami, that in case I don't know if you realize this, but you were adored by the musicians here. The musicians <laughs> loved you here. They loved all of you, but they loved you were clearly there was a long search process. And I think you came in at the end and it was an immediately obvious that Thank you were the one they wanted. And so it was wonderful for us to have you here, even briefly, but it was terrific. And you I know also that in rough times, you were very supportive of the musicians themselves, as you. you all have been. And that's always that can be a challenge as well. Alessandro Siciliani, happily for us, you are, you are in the community making music, uh, but you were certainly someone who played to full houses when you conducted the Columbus Symphony. Uh, there were, it was hard to get tickets to some concerts. Uh, tell us about the, you know, what, what made the symphony special as an orchestra in your view, in your tenure? Well, <clears throat> the, the most special thing, uh, and uh, they let me know, for the first time, uh, the musician, uh, the, uh, the board, the community, they let me be 
the music director of this uh, symphony and uh, who I heard uh, it was a, it was a surprise also for me when I directed the first time in 1980 and um, the second thing I'm happy to hear uh, what uh, Maestro Milan of uh, Hirokami is uh, to hear they said about the orchestra what kind of orchestra they follow especially Hirokami when I came here with my very primitive, no, now I am uh, Lorenzo Olivier with my English, but in any case, uh, the first thing I said, what you would like to do with this orchestra, I, I said, I remember perfectly well, I was to make of Columbus Symphony the most European orchestra in the United States. <laughs> and what, <laughs> means that, <laughs> and what means to me was, okay, it, Besides the precision, the, the, all the stuff, okay, of course, is necessary, but I would like to introduce in this orchestra, in orchestra, American orchestra, the ductibility, the flexibility, the phrasing, the, yeah. the, the passion yeah. in make music and not play music and not play notes, mm. even beautifully. And uh, after what I heard from Maestro, like uh, guest conductor, uh, if you call uh, Senkov uh, or many other, and today from Mirokami, Zeutoni, and Milano, if I go in order uh, the succession, seems that probably in the 13 years uh, uh, I have done something because they recognize what uh, from the first day in 1991 I start to have in my mind a change of this orchestra. Make duttibility, and flexibility, and musicality, <laughs> and especially under me, I'm not a myself te technical. Every conductor have an easy life with this orchestra <laughs> because everybody probably was more clear than me. But clear doesn't mean like uh, <laughs> Franco Ferrara said. The people said that. Uh, uh, Fruit Wengler is not clear because he was doing something <laughs> like uh, uh, Parkinson. <laughs> park. No, it's uh, for me, it's extremely clear. One of the most clar clarity because he knows exactly what is it is sure we seek exactly what you want musically, you know, is a great musician. So that's what I, have. I cannot add any more because I will repeat what the uh, Maestro Milanov said that with the uh, hero coming with uh, very enthusiasm and uh, and uh, and the maestro Zeutoni, uh, it was the second. So, well, thank you. I have to thanks because you make me happy today, make my day because since uh, <laughs> what was in my mind to do, I was able to do it, and uh, that is a great compliment. <laughs> really, thank you to all the maestro, you are too kind. <laughs> You were trying to make a European orchestra in central Ohio, uh, but the orchestra itself remained uh, American, but very, very flexible and very adaptable to what everybody I think wanted to do. You know, George Schramm, I wanted to say to you that um, nobody is better at working an audience than you are. Uh, nobody is better than really transmitting a love for music than you are. So let's let's transition a bit. Uh, and I'll start with you about asking about the audiences in Columbus and what you found here. Wow. Um, I, I thank you for what you just said, but I, I, I don't really, I was in showbiz for a little while before, before I, I became serious about music making and, and studied classical music. So I had a certain comfort uh, with, with be, being with audiences, but, but mostly whatever I've received in terms of appreciation uh, and, and, and people showing up at concerts, I, I think, came forth out of a natural uh, and and you know m m i i don't have any airs i don't think and so and so it's, it's sort of if i'm just honest and 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 make the music and try to be a bridge between the music that we make and and how audiences can perceive it um if and i think i think that might have been one of my pluses you know to be able to do that and i'm grateful for for that ability as far as I want to come back to the, not that you asked, but but I want to uh, the unique things about the Columbus Symphony Orchestra. Um, 
I think I was with the symphony but for about 36 years. So some of the people in the orchestra uh, are still, I, I look at as dear friends. But the, the thing that over the years happened is that they followed me anywhere I wanted to go. I really had that trust. So, so we made great music. Uh, and often on very limited rehearsal uh, that we could enjoy. And they also I had them singing and dancing and, and doing so from the heart because maybe their kids were in the audience or they just liked what the symphony was doing. And so that, in my experience, has been unique. Uh, you know, it might have come because of longevity with the symphony. At least in one place in my life, I've worn well, which is nice to know. Um, but 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 so 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 that I would say is the unique thing that I think I, I just simply love so many of the folks in the orchestra, and they are still my friends. I think the love is flowing back to all of you, to be honest with you. And as people are going to be watching this presentation over the next few weeks, celebrating the orchestra's 70th anniversary, you're probably all going to get fan mail and, you know, people looking for you on social media and blowing kisses and everything. So prepare to be kissed and, and loved everybody out there. Um, I do want to ask you, I want to throw that question out again to the rest of you, uh, talking about... Uh, what you got from the audiences that came to the Ohio theater, that came to the uh, chemical abstracts lawn for the pops, that came downtown to the, to the pavilion for the pops concerts, that came to the run out concerts, that came to Carnegie Hall. What did you all get from, from the audiences in Columbus? How about you, Junichi, because you're up in the middle of the night. What did the, <laughs> what did the audiences in Columbus do for you? Audience was for me fantastic, and um, I hope um, if uh, people who have money and support <laughs> and there's a warm, warm feeling, um, please, please build to Ohio City. It's a wonderful concert hall, and then. Um, all of the people in your city's people, including uh, rich people or, uh, how say, uh, uh, university uh, students and uh, women, the young girls and the boys and the families and normal families, everybody love to go to center of Ohio because you have a one of the greatest stockists. And then only it is necessary to uh, hold who, which has a good acoustic and uh, very nice uh, atmosphere for uh, music. That's all. It's so an audience were, for me, it's wonderful. And the people are so wonderful. We did a uh, bar after the concert and uh, talking with a drink. Uh, and everybody, I, 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 I remember still. I people. remember that, yeah. That was yeah. great. Yeah. People yeah. love the music and they hear to talk to Unichi, even uh, not clear the English, but they try to listen. And, and uh, I also try to talk to by English and then we made their friends a lot. Uh, I love them still. Yeah. And uh, thank you for that. And you are remembered with love as well. Jean-Marie Zaituni, how about audiences for you here in Columbus specifically? Yes. Uh, well, audiences are like, like people are. And my experience in, in Columbus and the time that I, that I spent there is that the people of Columbus, they are very welcoming. They are... Mm -hmm non-complicated i don't know how to say but the idea is that there's a, pro a proximity in 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 living in in columbus i rapidly felt like you know people because people saw my face on the on the poster or whatever so people constantly talk to me so my impression is that uh, uh, it's a very friendly very open very family-like uh, 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 rap uh, rapport uh, and uh, the the audience they they supported the orchestra they took the music very seriously and they were very enthusiastic so and of course audiences everywhere are, are enthusiastic but the feeling of uh, rapidly being uh, you know after a few weeks uh, I felt that I I had uh, 
like I've always been there. You know, people were talking to me on the street, uh, the, <laughs> the numerous restaurants that I visited or, you know, shopping in the short north or uh, uh, whatever. I felt very, uh, it's a big city. It has, you know, the Capitol building, etc. And at the same time, it's really a small uh, city because people are uh, friendly. Uh, like, you know, I had the, uh, yeah, really the feeling to, to invest in making music for, for my neighbors, you know, in a way. And the sense the, of community is very, uh, very strong. I was, I was there, of course, when the, the pops moved downtown in the park, you know, and people were, it's not going to be like before, it's, it's etc. And of course, there's always, you know, and uh, Albert, you know, uh, you, you know, what's this about? But then, you know, when I was walking down uh, downtown and saw uh, thousands of people sitting on the lawn, uh, I, I was, I was, please, you know, saying like, really, this is a, this is a, the orchestra is, is for the people of the city. And they, they come and they get their, their nourishing uh, with, with the, with the music and with the art form that we do. So th that was just uh, beautiful. Speaking of the move downtown for the pop specifically, I do want to acknowledge uh, Bill Connor, may he rest in peace, who was the uh, head of Kappa for many years, and he was a big part of making that happen. That was one of his dreams, and um, he's someone I loved very much, and I know he was dear to a lot of people here, so uh, it's good to remember Bill Connor and, uh, and to, to his memory, you know, terrific. Uh, Rosen Milanov, what's coming up for the future in the Columbus Symphony? Where are you taking us? It's been a great ride so far. Thank you. Um, uh, I just would like to mention something which I think is very important for us to acknowledge in the, the, the current time and probably like since the pandemic started and also uh, as we are getting out of the pandemic. I think we understood that the oh. symphony orchestra is not going to be only there for the pure classical music lovers or the pops concerts lovers or whatever your, your preference of flavor is going to be. If we want to survive as an institution, if we want to be meaningful for this city, we have to actually open ourselves uh, to different types of experiences, to be there for different type of people, ranging from people that don't know anything about classical music or music in general, and also in the current climate of all the social unrest and the Black Lives Matter and the movement for uh, acknowledging that there is a lot more diversity that we were able to, to show in the past from our stages, to really open our stages for different type of stories to be told. Perhaps stories that in the past did not have the same type of open big stage and exposure. Uh, so this is something that I think it's a game changer for all of the arts organizations nowadays, because what we would like to do from the stage is to look like what Columbus looks nowadays on the streets in terms of racial diversity, in terms of people. The city is growing so rapidly and probably it's not the same uh, uh, from what it was 20, 25, 30 years ago. There is a lot of different people here, and I feel that we owe to them uh, the experiences that will include them, that will include their heritage, that will include their music, that will include their language, and all of that, because this is how we are going to survive, by being more relevant and not, not just for the elite, not only for the few people that, uh, that, would, that would enjoy a specific type of musical experience, uh, that we consider European American or whatever you you want to describe it with. So we are moving in that direction. And um, if if I have to talk briefly about my programming this year is uh, I have thirteen compositions or guest artists that are not people of that are not white people. That is music of composers of color, composers of of uh, ethnical uh, background that is normally uh, not represented on our stages. Um, we are going to have the first uh, cast of both Mimi and Rodolfo being African-American. 
on stage. We are going to have the first black Jesus in, in St. John's Passion by Bach. Uh, we are going to have a wonderful um, Black History Month in February, having, uh, having Bill Eddins as, as a guest conductor who curated the entire program. So these are the things that I'm proud of. I'm, I'm proud of expanding uh, the future of the Columbus Symphony by including more people, by including different experiences and uh, by opening our doors for everyone and to also focusing on, on nurturing the next audiences of, uh, of, of music in general, not only classical. And uh, I'm proud that this is also part of the of the symphony's uh, strategic plan at the moment. And uh, this is really a great time to be, a, to be in Columbus because of that, among many other things. A big welcome sign for everybody in front of the Ohio Theater. We have five minutes left. And in those five minutes, I want anybody who wants to, to share one last memory or comment. We've got five minutes, don't be shy. Okay, I will, I will start them because uh... I'm the longer one normally, so <laughs> <laughs> I won't take up very much. <laughs> no, uh, first of all, um, uh, talking about the audience, uh, I would like just to say uh, they, I love it because uh, they let me feel loved from the first moment. Uh, really, uh, the arm was uh, open like that, and it was embraced me like uh, I was uh, the, the, their, the, the, their song. The second, I would like to do. Uh, the, the opera project uh, I create uh, is not a company uh, have any intention to be in competition, bad competition, because competition is a word uh, very important. Uh, we need to know philosophically from where uh, the, the, the derivation in you know, competition with opera um, Columbus, with the Co Co Columbus Symphony, absolutely not. It's something completely different with other little flowers. Uh, second, I would like to say thank you again to all the, the maestri, the, the maestro who came after me. And I would like to ask something to Maestro Milanov. Because uh, I'm sure that for the 80 years anniversary of Columbus Symphony, you will be there. <laughs> if uh, I, will be, I will be in good health too, in the first concert or pre-concert, you uh, should invite uh, all of us, uh, not just to speak with God, but to do a concert yes. all together. Yeah. To That's a great the idea. Concert. That's a great Don't idea. To to the, more. But yeah. it's, it's the only one thing. <laughs> you... We don't you need to wait me. until the end of the anniversary. Not talk to the audience. Uh, only me <laughs> and Maestro Hirokami. <laughs> <laughs> I would Everybody love that. that I would love that. Send me your dates. I'll coordinate it. We don't have to wait for uh, for another. Uh, we could do years. it as soon as all of us are available. It'd be wonderful. The community would love that. The community would really eat that up. If you all came back and spent uh, over a six-month period and appeared, that would be just marvelous. Uh, three more minutes. Anybody else have a final comment? I just want no, to jump in. Thing? Hang on. Let, yeah. Hang on. Let, no, no. Mike. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just one one memory when my daughter was was born I I had to cancel that engagement that that week because I had to go back to Montreal and uh, I would be ashamed not mentioning uh, Peter Wilson uh, Peter Staffel Wilson who's been there uh, I don't know how how for, for how many we, years and so I called Peter and I said well could you could you I, the program exactly was a roaring 20s you know we had Prokofiev second violin concerto and Stravinsky's octet and I think uh, Darius Milo Le Boeuf sur le toit or, and and uh, so uh, Peter said of course of course you know <laughs> I I will do it and go uh, uh, go to be present for the the birth of your uh, of your daughter but uh, Peter was always a a, a a a teammate, you know, a very a important teammate, and so I think for the anniversary of the, of the symphony, my my fond memory uh, I'd like to share is of him. I should also make the point that he was invited and was going to be participant with us today, but between a computer glitch and a rehearsal schedule with the Springfield Symphony, he just couldn't make it happen at the last minute. But he was very was much just, invited, just and it was to... hoped that he would. He, yeah, I was. Very hopeful he would join us and he's he's with us in spirit.
I was uh, I, I was looking to see him, and I would like to say, George, I forgot to mention, thank you to take care. So the the baby symphony, the good baby symphony in the in the pop concert, because uh, in 13 years I never have to worry about this area. It was great. Thank you. And plus you conducted also two symphonic programs with us and uh, you did very well. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you all very much. This is the 70th anniversary of the Columbus Symphony and I was hoping this would come off and it did because you all made it come off and I'm grateful. Junichi Hirokami in Tokyo in the middle of the night, go to bed. Jean-Marie Zaituni with two beautiful children and a wonderful career. Albert George Schramm in Asheville, North Carolina playing pickleball and conducting. Alessandro Siciliani has his own opera company, the Opera Project Columbus and Rosen Milhanov is the music director of the Columbus Symphony. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, I suggest one thing, Christopher. Yes. An applause to all of us to the 70th year, to Maestro Milanov. <laughs> you bet. I'm Christopher Purdy for WOSU's Classical 101 with a bunch of very, very chatty and wonderful musicians and conductors. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everything you're doing for the symphony and for the community in Columbus. Thank, well, you're kind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Be well. Bravo. God bless. Stay safe.